Welcome to Roman Matter. This lesson will explore a basic element of a criminal offense, specifically the element of mens rea under both the common law and the model penal code. A word of caution, this course is intended to answer academic questions only. These materials are intended to reinforce your legal education or to satisfy the curious layperson, not legal advice. And with that, let's get to it. This lesson's purpose is to give an in-depth look at the element of mens rea in order to better understand the specifics of the criminal offenses covered in other videos. This lesson will proceed as follows. We start with a lesson introduction before examining actus reus in depth from both a common law and NPC perspective before concluding. Like actus reus, 1L criminal classes discuss mens rea in two contexts. One, how the common law classifies it, and two, how the model penal code categorizes mens rea. The common law, by virtue of its long history, describes the concept with a broad taxonomy. The MPC, however, divides mens rea into four categories. We will discuss the details particular to both systems of classification. Mens rea refers to the mental state or state of mind the defendant must be shown to possess by the prosecution. Black's Law defines mens rea as, quote, that state of mind that the prosecution, to secure a conviction, must prove that a defendant had when committing a crime, and as criminal intent or recklessness, unquote. Mens rea is a Latin phrase, meaning guilty mind. The historical forces shaping the concept were, and to a great degree still are, rooted in Christian notions of sin. After all, those who find themselves subject to criminal law are routinely and uniquely viewed as deserving of its attention, with or without good reason. Regardless of the propriety of these historical forces, their impact has overwhelmingly shaped the concept and will likely continue to do so. But that is a discussion for another time. Keep in mind, mens rea is not motive. Do not confuse this fact. A man who steals to feed his family may be motivated by a morally defensible motive but is still guilty of theft. This is because in addition to the guilty act, he committed the crime with a guilty mind that intended the crime's outcome. Under the common law and over the centuries, mens rea has been categorized, defined, and systematized by myriad judges, scholars, and academics. As is frequently the case with the common law, it's messy. For the purposes of this lesson, we will divide the common law spectrum of mens rea categories into four broad categories. Intent, knowledge, recklessness, and criminal negligence. Intent will be further divided into three subcategories, malice, specific intent, and general intent. Knowledge can be divided into knowingly and willfully, while recklessness and criminal negligence will be addressed as singular concepts. The point here is that your own studies may have exposed you to a slightly different scheme of categorization. Regardless, the one we are providing will discuss all salient points. Let's examine each of these categories in turn. Malice is a particular kind of mens rea. It appears similar to specific intent, but is distinguished from it in notable ways. Black's Law defines malice as, quote, the intent without justification or excuse to commit a wrongful act, reckless disregard of the law or of a person's legal rights, ill will, or wickedness of the heart, unquote. Malice only applies to common law murder and arson. For historical reasons, this mens rea category was created to deny the specific intent defenses to those accused of these crimes. Also, while murder requires malice of forethought, do not confuse the mens rea requirement of that crime, specific intent, with the one that we are discussing here. Common law murder is a specific intent crime. Black's Law defines specific intent as, quote, the intent to accomplish the precise criminal act that one is later charged with, unquote. A specific intent crime's elements require that it be done with a specific state of mind or objective. The intent specified can span a wide spectrum, but usually the intent stated is purposefully or knowingly. 
Specific intent matters for two reasons. One, the intent described in the crime's elements must be present for liability to attach. And two, the specific intent crimes can be rebutted with defenses specific to those types of offenses. General intent requires of the accused an awareness of the factors constituting the crime. Black's Law defines general intent as, quote, the intent to perform an act even though the actor does not desire the consequences of that result. This is the state of mind required for the commission of certain common law crimes not requiring specific intent or not imposing strict liability. All crimes, to a degree, are general intent crimes. However, there are common law crimes that don't require any specific mens rea type. Knowledge, as a mens rea category, is the gray area between intentionally and recklessly. Generally, it describes a state of mind in which the actor engages in a criminal act, knowing that it's wrong or prohibited, but not necessarily intending the negative consequences resulting from it, but nonetheless, virtually certain that they will occur. The two most common mens rea subtypes in this category are knowingly and willfully. Black's Law defines knowing as, quote, having or showing awareness or understanding, being well informed, deliberate or conscious, unquote. Black's Law defines willful as, quote, voluntary and intentional, but not necessarily malicious. It goes on to define willfulness as, quote, the fact or quality of acting purposefully or by design, deliberateness, intention. Willfulness does not necessarily imply malice. It involves more than just knowledge. It is the voluntary, intentional volition or disregard of a known legal duty. Recklessness is a particular type of mens rea in which the actor is aware of a significant danger or potential harm to human life, but nonetheless proceeds on a course of action likely to result in that known danger or harm. Black's Law defines recklessness as, quote, conduct whereby the actor does not desire harmful consequence, but nonetheless foresees the possibility and consciously takes the risk. Recklessness involves a greater degree of fault than negligence, but a lesser degree of fault than intentional wrongdoing. The state of mind in which a person does not care about the consequences of his or her actions. Unquote. Recklessness is sometimes described as wantonness. Black's Law defines wantonness as, quote, conduct indicating that the actor is aware of the risks, but indifferent to the results. Wantonness usually suggests a greater degree of culpability than recklessness, and it often connotes malice in criminal law contexts. Unquote. Criminal negligence is the criminal mirror to tort negligence. In essence, an actor who engages in criminal negligence had a duty, the breach of which was the actual and proximate cause of damages to another's person or property. This negligence was of a type sufficient to bring criminal charges. Black's Law gives us two definitions that build upon one another to help illustrate this concept. Black's Law defines gross negligence as, quote, a lack of slight diligence or care, a conscious, voluntary act or omission in reckless disregard of a legal duty and of the consequences to another party, who may typically recover exemplary damages. Black's Law defines criminal negligence as, Gross negligence so extreme that it is punishable as a crime. Unquote. Okay, we've covered the common law's take on mens rea. Now let's look at the model penal code's perspective on the subject. As we've seen, the common law is an adjective and adverb filled morass. The common law is judge made and varies over time and space. The MPC in contrast, was created by legal scholars and all at once. The MPC attempted to create a model code without the common law's ambiguities, vagaries, and passion for literary flourish. So let's take a look at its provisions regarding mens rea. Section 2.02 .02, subsection 4 of the MPC provides that if the statute expressly names a kind of culpability, then that kind or type shall apply to all material elements of the defined offense. Section 1.13 subsection 10 defines the term material element as 
an element that does not relate exclusively to the statute of limitations, jurisdiction, venue, or any other matter similarly unconnected with 1. The harm or evil incident to conduct sought to be prevented by the law defining the offense, or 2. The existence of a justification or excuse for such conduct. So, a material element can be thought of as the terms composing the spirit of the statute. It does not refer to the various administrative terms that may be found in it. Instead, it refers to the concept the statute is attempting to regulate or proscribe. Section 2.02, subsection 1 of the Model Penal Code describes the minimum requirements of culpability. Its mens rea categorizations fall along a spectrum. The four mental states described are purposefully, knowingly, recklessly, and negligently. As an easy mnemonic, just remember p -kern. Let's examine each of these mental states in turn. To act purposely requires the actor intend the occurrence of a particular outcome, or stated differently, to act purposely is to consciously intend the prohibited outcome. It is the highest level of culpability. The MPC describes this state of mind. It states that, quote, a person acts purposely with respect to a material element of an offense when the element involves the nature of his conduct or a result thereof. It is his conscious objective to engage in conduct of that nature or to cause such a result. And if the element involves attendant circumstances, he is aware of the existence of such circumstances or he believes or hopes that they exist. To act knowingly requires that the actor be aware that his conduct or particular circumstances are prescribed and that if he continues with this course of action, the conduct or those circumstances are likely to result in the harm the statute was intended to prevent. This mens rea classification is very similar to willful under the common law. The MPC describes this particular state of mind, stating that a person acts knowingly with respect to a material element of an offense when the element involves the nature of his conduct or the attendant circumstances. He is aware that his conduct is of that nature or that such circumstances exist. And if the element involves a result of his conduct, he is aware that it is practically certain that his conduct will cause such a result. Recklessness requires the actor to consciously engage in conduct he understands to be dangerous or harmful to others. Section 2.02, .02, subsection 2, C, provides that a person acts recklessly with respect to a material element of an offense when he consciously disregards a substantial and unjustifiable risk that the material element exists or will result from his conduct. The risk must be of such a nature and degree that considering the nature and purpose of the actor's conduct and the circumstances known to him, its disregard involves a gross deviation from the standard of conduct that a law-abiding person would observe in the actor's situation. As you can see, the definition for recklessly involves both a subjective and objective standard. Section 2.02, .02, subsection 2D, provides that a person acts negligently with respect to a material element of an offense when he should be aware of a substantial and unjustifiable risk that the material element exists or will result from his conduct. The risk must be of such a nature and degree that the actor's failure to perceive it, considering the nature and purpose of his conduct and the circumstances known to him, involves a gross deviation from the standard of care that a reasonable person would observe in the actor's situation. Okay, now we've covered mens rea under both the common law and the MPC. This lesson's purpose was to give an in-depth look at the element of mens rea in order to better understand the specifics of the criminal offenses covered in other videos. We started with a short lesson introduction before examining actus reus in depth from both a common law and MPC perspective before concluding. We dug into the common law's broad spectrum of judge-made categorizations before looking at the MPC's spectrum of four categories, those of purposefully, knowingly, 
recklessly, and negligently. Of course, mens rea is only one element of the four basic elements of a crime. In light of that, I highly encourage you to take a look at the other videos covering actus reus, as well as concurrence and causation. That's it for this lesson. If you found it helpful, give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. Leave some comments below and check back often for more content. As always, thank you for visiting Roman Manor and have a lovely day.